This video is going to demonstrate the basics of fire and smoke in Blender 2.8. Um, we're going to convert it from EV to cycles for this video. Now we could apply this to a cube, but I prefer to use a more high poly object. So let's go ahead and delete that cube and add in a, a monkey, that's a monkey head. You could also give it a subdivision surface modifier. And we're going to add in our effect. Now you can do this under object. Just select um, quick effects and quick smoke. This box you see around it is the domain. Um, basically it says where the fire can be and where it can't be. If this domain is outside the realm of the object, the fire will not appear. So make sure it's within it. You can scale this domain on any axis. We're going to be doing that a little bit later. Um, let's go ahead and press play and see what happens. Okay, so we have just a, a normal combo smoke rising. Most of the settings for this um, smoke is going to be found in the physics tab. So go ahead and go down to here. And let's go ahead and take a look. Um, we're selecting the domain right now, so we're under domain. Uh, your divisions can be brought about 40, I think. It really depends on what you're, on what kind of, uh, on what kind of resolution you're looking for. So your border collisions also has a lot to do with this. If it's open, it means smoke can freely go out of all edges or all faces of this, um, of the domain. If it's under collision or collide all, what happens is this smoke will hit the top of the, um, of, in this case, the domain. Now this can be advantageous for some shots, like if you're inside of a room and you want the smoke to react with the walls, I would definitely recommend using this. But for this, we'll be using a, um, an open board collision. Um, you have dissolve, which is pretty important. If you Basically, right now, the smoke goes up and gets cut off by the top. But if you turn dissolve on, it dissolves right here. So in other words, you can't really tell, in order to view, you can't tell where the, you know, where the domain is supposed to be. That helps out a lot. Um, Let's go ahead and get some fire on this before we do anything further. So I'm going to go ahead and select the object. We're going to go to um, flow type, make this fire and smoke. And if we press play, we have this. So we have a lot of flame going on here. Uh, to fix that, let's go ahead and go to the surface and bring this way down. I recommend just pulling it almost as far as you can go, actually. But even then, you can see we still have a lot of flame. And I find that what fixes this normally is the flame rate. So if we turn that down to about 0.2, you can see we have a much better, uh, much better ratio between um, flame and smoke. Now um, we do have initial velocity down here. Basically, what this does, if you have a separate object that has its own uh, quick effect, you can see that this um, this flame right here reacts violently with it. I'm not really sure why. I'm not sure exactly how this initial velocity thing works, but um, it's something that you probably can mess around with to get different results. But the um, I prefer just to have the, the, the initial velocity off. So let's go back to the domain settings and keep working here. We have field weights, which is um, basically what kind of forces can affect your flames. So we have gravity, uh, magnetic, wind, etc. Um, by default, they're all on. If you feel the need to remove one of them, definitely do it right here. And then you have the high resolution, which I definitely recommend turning this on, and your depth of domain. So what this does, your depth of domain, first of all, basically defines where your smoke needs to be um, rendered or, or needs to be calculated. Um, high resolution turns it to a, a um, well, it's just that high resolution, it's just a lot more detailed. Now your smoke um, can be fixed by <laughs> making this a uh, larger number, so you can make the dissolve more like 10, give it more time to dissolve and you'd have more smoke. Now the thing is, if you make the dissolve time too much, what happens is this smoke will go through the domain and you can see a cutoff. Um, you don't want to be seeing that in your, um, in your in your rendered shot, so you need to be careful about that. One thing that helps me out if I scale it up on the z-axis, and then um, do it again, you have more of a chance of you know it not cutting itself off. So that works pretty well. Now, if you go to this um, the scene data, you can see the gravity is checked and it has a um, has a value on the z-axis of a negative 9.81 meters per second squared. That is the acceleration of gravity. Uh, if you take in physics, you'll know that if you multiply an object's mass by this value, you can get its weight. Now the reason why Blender is doing this is because if you have like an object, in this case it's one kilogram, you can see if we press play we have a pretty realistic following. If we were to cancel the Z, make it zero meters per second squared, you would see that we have no um, no smoke movement, it's just, it's, it's just stuck onto the object. However, this can be advantageous as um, if you scale your, um, your domain on a different axis and make it you know, like a negative value here. In this case, I'm using a negative Y. You can see if we press play, we have a value going in a different direction. This is very helpful. Your next step is to give an actual uh, 
color to your flames. Let's go ahead and add in a value node. And unplug the value node into the black body intensity. And you would see we have a bit of flame right here. That's good news. Now this value node will actually control the amount of um, intensity the flame is. So if we give this like a 20, we have a much brighter flame. Uh, you may like the 20, uh, I like 10. That's pretty even. Uh, you can change the color of your smoke here. So you can make that much darker if you're looking for more of a realistic kind of a smoke. So you also have um, black body tint. Um, doing this will give you basic uh, tint to your, to your, um, to your flame. Uh, leaving it on default is fine. If you want to give it a slight, uh, more of a aggressive texture, that's good too. Now rendering this is pretty easy. Um, you just use your normal settings here. Well, that concludes this video. Thanks for watching it. Um, if you had any questions, put it down in the comments. And yeah, thanks for watching.